Good morning, everyone. Come on in and take a seat and we'll get underway. I want to welcome each of you to this webinar titled Five Ways to Grow Your Business Right Now. I'm Jack Dennison and I'm a business coach with J2 Development Services. I'd like to take just a minute to introduce myself and our company. At J2 Development Services, we help business owners grow their business. We do this by helping you achieve two fundamental goals. Accelerate your top line revenue growth and improve your bottom line net profit. Everything we do is geared towards achieving these two goals. The strategies we use grow out of our own personal experience as owners. Together with my wife Jackie, we ran our full service restoration and construction company and had an extraordinary experience. We love our industry, we loved our company, and we love the opportunities we have today to invest in helping other business owners grow their businesses just like we grew ours. Following nearly a decade of work, our company was active in five of the seven major third-party administrator networks. We were a preferred contractor for nearly 30 major insurance companies, and as a general contractor, we were licensed in 14 municipalities. Over the years, we had been selected uh, for many local, state, and national awards, including the Contractor Connection Golden Hammer Award, recognizing the top 5% of nearly 5,000 contractors as a top performer. Forbes Magazine selected us as the best in business for Colorado construction, and their feature article about us was titled, One Construction Industry Not in Recession. And we also received the Professional Remodelers America's Top Remodeler Award. Over nearly a decade of work, our company achieved an average annual growth rate of 46%. Whatever the revenue mark we achieved for the year, we added another 50% to that the next year and the next and the next. It really was a remarkable experience. And that learning and our experience produced results for us and it can for you too. Five ways to grow your business right now. Right now. I love that. This title was actually given to me by the conference leader who first invited me to speak about the topic at a national convention. We had been talking about our experience in the restoration industry and what we were doing to help current business owners. And he said, why don't you come to the national convention and speak on mm, five ways to grow your business right now. Well, I love that. I love the invitation and I love the title and I quickly accepted both. But you know, there are only so many ways you can grow your business. The possibilities aren't endless and they fall into two basic categories. One is internal growth that is incremental in nature and it's really about improving profits. This is about how to squeeze more out of every job and leave less on the table in lost charges. It's about looking at each of the operational matters that affects your profit margin and determining what you can do to improve that so that nothing is left on the table. It's incremental in nature because as you improve each operational efficiency, you might add 1% here, 2% there, and ultimately, you've been able to add an additional 5% or more to your bottom line. Now just think about that. Adding 5% to your net profit, wouldn't that make a huge difference for you? So you can see increasing your net profit is worth doing right now. If you improve your operational efficiencies by just 5%, you increase your net profit by 25%. And at the end of the day, it's not about revenue, it's about profit. Because profit is what you have left over when all else is said and done. Profit improvement and protection is worth doing right now. But I know that most owners really want to know about external growth. Growth that involves accelerating your top line revenue growth that can lead to transformational change for your company. Who doesn't want that? I have a companion webinar titled Three Ways to Double Your Revenue in 18 to 24 Months that deals in great detail with this topic of how to accelerate top line revenue growth. And it's available for free on my website and on YouTube, and I hope you'll take a look. It's not gimmicky. It's based on real-world and on-trend strategies that require hard work and skillful execution, but really can lead to a doubling or more of your business. 
So there are two basic categories of growth. Internal growth that is incremental in nature and improves your bottom line profits and external growth that can be transformational by accelerating your top line revenue. Both are essential to your business success and an owner shouldn't look at profit growth as the lesser of the two. In fact, would you rather be a $5 million company with a 10% profit margin earning $500,000 in net profit or a $2.5 million company earning a 20% profit margin and earning the same $500,000? Well, without a doubt, it's the latter. It's a whole lot easier to grow from $2.5 million to five than from five to $10 million. Just think, at $5 million, you could secure a $1 million net profit. Now, profit is really a big deal. So in terms of profit, the only factors that you have control over that can produce immediate results are the internal factors to your business, right? So let's take a look at five of these that can produce the greatest impact over the shortest time. So how do you grow your business right now? It begins by setting profit margin goals for each of your sources of revenue. Your revenue streams include water mitigation, mold remediation, carpet and duct cleaning, contents cleaning, construction services, roofing, and so on. And an amazing thing happens when you set a goal. You want to reach it. You start to assess how well you are doing in each area, how well your various operations are contributing to your net profit goals. You start making changes to bring about your operational efficiencies into alignment in order to maximize your efforts because you want to reach your goal. It's amazing how we're wired. Setting a goal for profit margins in each area of your work is a true game changer. So what should the profit goals be for each of these revenue streams? Here are the goals we set for our company, and I don't think yours should be any less. Water damage, 75% profit. Contents processing, 65% profit. Construction, 50%. Roofing, 40%. Now, probably every one of you contractors have your eyes riveted on that 50% profit margin for construction. You're asking, how in the world? You can't do that without cheating someone. And actually, that's not true. Most contractors have gone beyond expecting only overhead and profit, 10 and 10 on their construction work. Yet most are pretty happy with achieving a 30% profit margin, and 40% only rarely happens and only on a really good day. But 50%? No way. Yet I regularly earn 50% profit on my construction, and so should you. With Zactimate pricing, working in the insurance industry doing damage repair, Hitting a 50% profit margin was doable, and you should be achieving that on the majority of your work too. Now I realize that not all of you who do construction are insurance contractors. In fact, some of you aren't and you don't want to be. And I've heard all the excuses about insurance work being just too hard, about insurance companies beating you up over prices, margins being too thin and all of that. But I'm telling you, that stuff simply isn't true. There is nothing available in the marketplace today, nothing that can be as transformational for your business as doing damage repair in the insurance industry. The results can be huge for your company. Now imagine a steady volume of business, no bidding, no competing, just getting the assignment, doing the work, and whatever you complete today will be replaced by more assignments tomorrow. I mean, what could be more perfect? The year that my company did $2.6 million in gross revenue, we were added to the USAA insurance program the following January, and we surged from $2.6 to $4.5 million in a single year. That was a 70% increase in a year when we were already doing multiple millions of dollars in gross sales. Adding USAA was not the only strategic step we took that year, but it was clearly the most impacting. If you haven't been introduced to the transformational power of insurance programs, I want to introduce you right now. This is one of the key strategies discussed in my next webinar, and you should really get in on it. So owners should set profit margin benchmarks for every major revenue stream that you work hard to achieve. There are a number of key internal factors that you have control over that affects your ability to sustain higher profits. 
You should understand what they are and how to control them, and they include material sourcing, estimating, controlling material and labor costs, and job costing. By providing constant assessment of these internal factors, you can make the necessary changes to increase your profit for each and every area in which you work. This is something that you really want to be on top of. I'll just mention here as a brief aside. One of my life-changing events in my business life came following a Contractor Connection National Convention. I attended a workshop that really affected me. Whatever the subject was, I don't recall, but I came away with this overwhelming sense that I was spending too much time getting caught up in running the business, doing work other people really should be doing, and too little time in strategic planning, business development, and the kinds of activities that would continue to cause my company to grow. I talked it over with my wife, Jackie, who is also my business partner, and I made a resolution backed up by specific plans to change. If I've just described you, then you would do well to internalize that same message as deeply as I did and do something about it. The sooner you bring about a balance between working in and on your business, the more your business will prosper. Trying to save money by doing it all yourself will actually cost you in the long run when you don't have the time or energy to seize the opportunities and make the changes needed for greater growth. This really is a critical factor, and I encourage you to take some time to think about it. So how do you reach 50% profit on construction work? The average mitigation job nationwide is $2,500. If you achieve a 50% profit margin, you would earn $1,875 in profit. Not bad. The average rebuild nationwide is $10,000. And with a 50% profit margin, your earnings would be $5,000 per job. Now that is really, really good, wouldn't you? Assuming that we have a typical size job worth $10,000, labor normally runs about 60% of the total and materials about 40%. So we begin with O&P at $2,000 or 20%, and we are already well on our way to earning 50%. Let's pause at the labor number for just a moment, since that is the most difficult area to control. Here is the Zactimate pricing for a number of typical labor categories. This is what you get paid by the insurance company for your labor. Zactimate numbers are updated every month and for every city based upon local labor and material economies. In September 2014, these are the labor numbers you would be paid in Denver, my home, and in St. Louis, Missouri. General Carpentry, $57 in Denver, $56 in St. Louis. A carpet installer, $56 an hour in Denver, $47 in St. Louis. A painter at $50 an hour and $54. A drywall installer, $48 in Denver, $57 in St. Louis. A roofing installer, look at that, $86 and $99 per hour and even a demolition labor, doing deconstruction and the removal of materials, $42 an hour in each city. Now, I'm sure not one of you pays even half that amount as an hourly wage for any of these labor categories. So let's assume you pay 60% of what you're paid. Securing a profit on labor at 40% of $6,000 or $2,400. Now we're at $4,400 profit for the job. We're getting pretty close to achieving our 50% goal. And if you can do even a modest job sourcing your materials below Zactimate retail pricing, you can save at a minimum 20%, leading to another $800 of profit. And there you are at $5,200 profit or 52% profit on the job. Now how good is that? You can do it. You should do it consistently on the majority of your work, not 30%, not even 40%, but 50% each time. Remember to set your profit goals for each revenue stream and fight to achieve them every single time. So how do you grow your business right now? By saving big with wholesale material sourcing. If you're buying materials at retail, you're getting killed at the profit line. 
You don't want to buy retail. You want to buy from the same wholesalers your retailers are buying from before they mark up your product purchases by 20 or 30 percent or more. It's worth your time to find these profit-generating relationships with key wholesalers, both in your local area and others nationally, that will ship goods to your warehouse door. As the owner of a restoration company, I used to get killed on repairing damaged flooring. I just couldn't figure it out. My estimators couldn't figure it out, and we lost money on nearly every flooring job we did. One day, my dear wife Jackie said, that does it. I'm going to figure this out, and she did. She began her search and soon discovered Shaw Industries, of course, the largest manufacturer of flooring products in the world. From there, she found the Shaw Industries direct wholesale distributor selling Shaw flooring products at 35 to 50 percent below retail. Wow, what a find! This distributor will ship materials to anywhere in the U.S. within a week, which is twice as fast as any other retailer, and will deliver it on the Shaw Industries truck to your location for 80 bucks. Not bad. You can see why we began to dance every time we got a substantial amount of flooring because we knew we were going to kill it. We went from fear to delight over flooring because we figured it out. We found deeply discounted materials to improve our profits on every job and that made all the difference in the world. On top of this, Shaw helped us set up a flooring showroom right there in our own office. We had multiple carpet lines and carpet boards. Some of them provided an exact match to the four levels of Zactimate pricing from AV- to AV++, so we knew exactly what carpet boards to present as a light kind and quality, and we had boards for display and for presentation. Along with that came tile, hardwood, engineered wood, vinyl, and other uh, product boards, and I can't tell you how helpful all of that was. The showroom itself became a very important marketing tool for us. When insurance professionals and executives would drop by, and of course they don't come by very often, but when they did, they were always impressed with the showroom and it became an important differentiator for our business. We invited claims managers and regional managers to visit our office. We wanted them to come by just to see what we had done, and some actually did, and every time they were impressed. One five-state regional manager visited us twice, once to see our showroom and another time to visit our state-of-the-art contents processing center, and each time he said to us, he said, typical Jack and Jackie. See, he was impressed by what he saw, and he came to anticipate this level of quality from our company in all things we did. As you can imagine, we were a key contractor for his program in our area. Insurance professionals are always concerned about how we take care of their customer and demonstrating that we have a very user-friendly process for flooring selection was really important to them. We didn't simply send the customer down to Carpet One or Home Depot or some other retailer, but we took the showroom to them. Right there in the convenience of their own home, they were provided as many selection options as local retailers. Our customers were happy and our insurance professionals were impressed. As you can see from this slide, we also found that many wholesalers don't sell directly to contractors. We had a customer who wanted a particular exotic hardwood, and they wanted us to buy it from the same retailer who had initially sold it to them. When I contacted the retailer, I found that they were going to charge me every nickel I was getting paid for the material, and I knew that wasn't going to work. So I did some research, and I discovered that the source of this hardwood was actually a wholesaler in Denver. I called him up and I said, Bill, this is Jack Dennison from ABC Restoration. I'd like to place an order, please. Bill paused. Then he said, I'm sorry, but we don't sell to contractors and just hung up on me. So I gave some thought to that. Now, how do I get around this? What workaround might work for me? Eventually, I decided to incorporate a new company. So I called up Bill again and I said, Hi, Bill. This is Jack Dennison from Colorado Flooring. I'd like to place an order, please. He again paused. This time he said, Jack, looks like you're not in our database. Let's set you up with a new account right now and get you taken care of right away. There it was. I had found the way I had it done. I discovered several reasonable workarounds, ways to access wholesalers and increase my purchasing power, 
and improved my net profit on every job. I bought materials from local and national sources typically open only to brick and mortar retail stores. I learned how to acquire wholesale accounts with these suppliers and found it to be one of the easiest and fastest ways to increase my profits across the board on all my water and fire damage repair work. Flooring, as you know, is typically the single largest estimate item in most damage repair. So finding wholesalers who would sell at deeply discounted prices is really a big deal when it comes to securing profit per job. If you're interested in knowing more about this national wholesaler, write or call me and I'll get you introduced to these great folks right away. Back to the slide. Did you know that if you concentrated your material buying at Home Depot, you could become a managed account? Home Depot has really set the bar on discounted material sundries in the local marketplace. They, have a, they are a great source for sundries. If you become a managed account, each time you purchase $1,000 or more, your invoice is sent to the bid room for additional savings. And everything you buy, regardless of the amount, for the next seven days also gets sent for additional savings. So Monday morning, we'd march down, put in a combined order at Home Depot of $1,000, to get our discount and then we continued to get discounted materials for added savings throughout the rest of the week. Then at the end of each quarter we received our rebate check which added still more savings. Now how good is that? Protecting or improving your profit is an incremental effort. Saving 1% here, 2% there, until you have amassed savings of 5% or more adding a significant percentage to your growing net profit for your business. It's really worth doing right now. So how do you grow your business right now? By getting the most out of every estimate and leaving zero on the table to lost wages. Probably every one of you contractors would say that you believe your estimators are leaving money on the table. Where, how much, and what to do about it, you've got no idea, but you're confident they're leaving something on the table. Imagine if your estimators are making only a couple of consistent estimating mistakes. Just imagine the amount of revenue that could cost you over the course of an entire year. My experience is that most estimators are self-trained. They may have attended the introductory three-day Zactimate training offered by Zactware just as I did, but that's really about learning how to sketch, not about how to estimate. So you hire your estimators because of their strong construction experience and because they know how to use Zactimate, meaning they create a halfway decent looking estimate. But many of the internal features of Zactimate, while not hidden, they do go unnoticed and unused by many estimators, and you don't even know that this is costing you money. As a means to help upgrading skills and to better ensure that these important features are not unnoticed, why not require your estimators to complete the levels one through three certification training offered by Zactware? So maybe every six months or so, you could require that they pass the next level of certification. You buy the materials, they study and test on their own, and you reward them in some way for their successful completion for each level of certification. Would this increase your confidence that they're growing in their skills and in their use of the primary tool so that nothing is getting overlooked? If not this way, then what would you do to help to ensure this? Doing nothing is certainly not the answer and only helps to ensure you continue to lose more money. I know some estimators who can't even pull a roof properly. They, ha they have to rely on Eagle View to get their sketch for Zactimate. If you look at the sketch in 3D, you see that the roof lines don't even tie in properly. Now that's probably why your roofing crews are going back to your supplier two and three times during a job. More shingles, more ridge cap, more drip edge, because the estimator is not doing the job they should, and the money that is lost is yours. Decking had been a real problem in our company. After doing two massive decks for thirty dollars and $40,000 each, I looked at the profit margin for each job and I shuddered. So I immediately sat down with my estimator to figure out what was going wrong. We started looking through the estimate in Zactimate, and after several minutes, at one point, he said, Oh, look, Zactimate only gave me three hangers and half the joists that I need. That darn program. I said, Now, wait a second, dude. The problem isn't Zactimate. This is a user error. And so I required that he become skilled at using the deck tool so that going forward, we would avoid this kind of loss and it wouldn't happen again. Zactware provides training for this tool, too. 
There's training available for each of these specialty features in Zactimate to help your estimators do the best job possible, because when they don't, you lose. Remember, in this webinar, we are on a profit hunt, trying to find every percentage of profit that we can regain and add to your bottom line, and estimating is a gold mine of opportunity to doing this. The graphical estimating feature in Zactimate is also another wonderful uh, help in securing profit. Uh, it's a terrific time saver when used properly, and I especially like the drop and fill feature for flooring. Now, many estimators are still using the manual 15% entry for waste calculations for carpet and vinyl, but I've never seen the graphical drop and fill feature of Zactimate calculate waste at less than 24 to 27%, and sometimes the cut sheets created by the program provide more waste than this. So what if the waste is 27% and you send your expert flooring installer out to the job and he comes back with a really tight cut sheet with 12% waste? What happens to the other 15% of waste that you just saved? It goes right into your pocket where it belongs. So upgrading your estimator skills, broadening your awareness of estimating best practices, Assessing estimates for thoroughness and accuracy and taking corrective action could produce significant estimate improvements and increased savings for you. Our hunt for a 5% improvement in internal operations for a 25% increase in bottom line profits could be found in estimating alone, and you know that that's true. No one's going to tell you that you're regularly underscoping your jobs. You have to find these deficiencies yourself and correct them. One final thought, and then we'll move on. Now, I'm not an estimator, and I didn't write estimates, but I became an exceptional reviewer of Zactimate estimates. I identified those unnoticed and unused features. I used them regularly, and I projected that at one point, my review in discovering line item mistakes added well over $100,000 a year to my company's bottom line. This process of internal review is critical to increasing net profits and the key to effective review are those hidden Zactimate features that go unnoticed. In my personal business coaching, I utilize a tool I created as part of my management services series titled How to Use Zactimate as an Effective Management Tool in which I cover all of these issues in greater depth and it's been a real help to others. You may be interested in talking with me further about these things and how to get on the road to estimate improvement. So how do you grow your business right now? By controlling labor and material costs. This is actually the single most important issue I'm talking about today. If we don't do a good job at this point, profits will just fly out the door and you won't even know how large your loss is. Picture your lost profits like a thermometer that continues to plummet in the cold night air. The problem is, once the needle drops on profit, it doesn't rise again in the sun of the next day. It's lost forever. Part of our challenge is that the work that we do as general contractors on each and every job is actually pretty complex, with lots of moving parts and therefore a lot of room for error. A roofing job is much more than just the roof and typically requires many more contractors than a roofer. In addition to the roof, you've got gutters, siding and stucco, paint, doors and windows, decks and fences, and perhaps HVAC. You could have five to seven contractors working on a single job. Very complex. The same is true of our interior work, where you have drywall and texture, paint, trim carpentry for base, case, and doors, cabinets and countertops, flooring, plumbing, electrical. Again, very complex with lots of moving parts. And because of the complexity of our work and the number of contractors we have working on every job, it's pretty easy to lose control of one or more phases of the job and perhaps the job as a whole. It's right here that you are vulnerable to losing the most. So how do you take control? Well, it begins with ensuring that each and every contractor who works on your job has a job-specific scope of work. I used to tell our carpenters and subs that if anyone, including myself, asked them to go to a job without a scope, they were to tell that person, including me, no. We trained our people to go out to the job site with their job scope in hand 
Stand in the middle of the room and look at each line item on the scope of work in terms of the damage in that particular room that they were supposed to do. If they found that there was additional damage not on the scope, then they were to contact the estimator or their project manager immediately to discuss it. If we authorized it, we'd add that damage to the scope of repair, increasing it. Now, every time we built a scope by doing this kind of good follow-up, we would get paid more and the worker would get paid more. If, on the other hand, we found that there was work on the scope that really didn't need to be done, then we'd follow the same protocol. If authorized to not do the work, it would be removed from the estimate so that when the final estimate was submitted, it was always comprehensive and accurate. When you submit final estimates that are not accurate, you look like you either you're incompetent or a cheater, and neither of these is good for business. So a master scope and materials list was provided to our construction manager and the project manager, and a job-specific scope and material list was given to each worker. Even if we were sending a mitigation crew out to clean carpets at the end of the job, they were given a scope to show what they were to do and in what rooms. Everybody has to have a scope showing exactly what work they're to do, and in providing this, you're also helping them to determine what work not to do. Now, how often has a customer tried to talk a worker into doing just a little bit more to help them out? But of course, once you touch it, you own it. So if the customer wants more work done, it should, gen it should generate a change order and they should pay for it, period. Once we had the scope broken apart for each phase of the job, we turned to the Zactimate Components Report as a key management tool. This is an incredibly valuable report that can be exported into Excel so you can manipulate the data. The report is comprised of three parts and shows you what you're being paid in each category. Those of you using Zactimate should be on familiar ground, but I'll say that I find a large number of contractors who use Zactimate but rarely use the components report. I can tell you that if you're one of those, you're making a big mistake because you can't run a construction job effectively without the information in this report. There's an equipment list which shows what tools, such as tile saw, carpet stretcher, and so on, may be needed on the job, and that you're going to be paid for by providing them. A materials component list shows all the materials needed to complete the work, includes quantity, the unit cost, and the total cost per item for the amount you're going to be paid. And there is a labor component, which details all the various trades and the hourly rate you're going to be paid and the total charges for the trade. Valuable information. So we provided a master material list for the construction manager and the project manager and a job specific material list with the scope to each worker. This was to help ensure that when they went shopping for materials, they knew exactly the quantity of drywall sheets to buy, the unit price and the total cost that materials sh should not exceed. You don't want a worker buying 15 sheets of drywall if you're only being paid for 10. Something's wrong. You don't want to pay $32 a gallon for paint if you're only being paid 26. Or the incident that got all this started for me was years ago when one of my carpenters bought a $210 sink and we were being paid only $60 for it. When I happened to come across this receipt, I was absolutely shocked. I asked Barry, what in the world were you thinking? With a straight face, he said, well, I didn't know how much I was supposed to pay. I just got a sink that I thought was like the one they already had. I paused and I thought about it for a minute. And you know, he was right. How would he know? That's when I began to look deeper into Zactimate to help me figure out how to better control costs and to make certain that the future berries knew the not to exceed price for everything they were going to purchase. We also trained our office staff that when a worker was on the way to the checkout stand, they'd call in and our office people would ask, do you have your materials list with you? If the answer was no, we'd say no to the purchase. I mean, how are you going to know what to buy and how much to spend and what quantity to get if you don't have your material list? So this became a very important component to our work and workers. So a scope of repair and material lists are absolutely crucial for each worker and to your management of the job. The labor component list is what helps you take control of your relationship with subcontractors. I know many contractors who bid out everything 
for their insurance work. Their profit margins are generally around 25% and nowhere near the 50% that they should be. The labor numbers from Zactimate were known only by my construction manager and myself. They were never shared with anyone else. I mentioned earlier in this webinar that Zactimate labor pricing for a number of trades in Denver and St. Louis that were absolutely huge. I used to tell others that I was applying a proprietary formula to figure out what I would offer in labor to a subcontractor or an independent contractor. That number was then given to the sub and it was almost always quickly accepted. For general carpentry in Denver, the hourly rate was $57. So 60% of that is $34 an hour. Now who wouldn't accept that? This was a good number for them and locked in my profit and we were both happy. If occasionally my numbers weren't accepted, I'd negotiate another one or $200 increase, but wouldn't budge beyond that. And in the end, if we didn't agree, I'd simply offer the scope and labor to another contractor and I was never turned down twice. Zactimate numbers at 60% of labor total is a good number for any worker on any day and in any city. So controlling material and labor costs will help you achieve that 50% profit margin that I described earlier. We would also provide a material list to the customer for items that required their selection for color, style, and uh, we provided a not to exceed price limit for them as well. We would tell them that you can buy any item you want at any store at any price, but you can't exceed the not to exceed price. All receipts were then faxed to our office and job costed, and this allowed the construction manager and project manager to monitor what their workers were buying and help them keep track to ensure that unit costs were not exceeded, nor the quantity. You are no more vulnerable to losing profit than through your workers and managers who themselves fail to control material and labor costs. This is absolutely huge and really requires your attention. So how do you grow your business right now? Are you surprised? <laughs> By job costing everything. Whether you job cost everything or just take a random number of jobs per month and job cost them, Information really needs to be captured and recorded in one of the great electronic job processing programs available today. Reviewing every single expense related to a particular project enables you to assess how close each job's total cost comes to your target profit margin. Then you can assess what you did well and what you did poorly and what corrective action needs to be taken. As you sit down, as I did so frequently, and begin to pour over some of the job costing reports, you're going to begin to see certain things stand out. So for example, I found that one project manager did a really good job hitting the profit goals and another one didn't. What is the one thing a project manager wants more than anything else? Get the job done. Once they finish the 10 jobs they're working on, there's another 20 coming down the pike. So they're always eager to close it out. And you want that, but you want some other things as well. You want to maintain your profit margin on each and every job. So you you may need to coach and train the one project manager who's not hitting the mark to help them maintain the same goals for the project that you have going forward. You might also discover three or four receipts on the same day. Now, what does that tell you? Your guys are spending half their time shopping at Home Depot and only the other half of the time on the job. We allowed a single trip per day, and once again, you may need to coach and train. Or you find that quantities or unit costs have been ignored. They bought more or spent more than they should have. Well, that's a problem since they've been provided a scope of work and a materials list for the job. So once again, you may have to coach and train or maybe replace. You may find that there was more work found and completed by the worker, but never discussed with the estimator or project manager. So that extra drywall and paint they bought and you paid for and the additional work that they did was done for free. You really don't want to do that, do you? Each of these things you're able to discover because of your job costing review. This is really important if you're going to reach your target profit goals. Otherwise, your profit margins will sail out the door and you won't even know it. I'll admit it's a hassle and it takes a dedicated staff to consistently track your expenses. But you're really going to have to do it if you're going to close the back door to what is likely your largest source of revenue loss. Poor accountability and mismanagement. When it comes to job costing, just do it. Well, there you have it. 
How do you grow your business right now? By setting profit goals for each and every revenue source. By developing wholesale buying relationships locally and nationally that will increase your per job profit. By requiring excellence and estimating through ongoing training and estimate review. Don't leave anything on the table. By implementing cost controls and really taking charge of your construction management processes. Close the back door to your greatest source of profit loss. And job cost everything so that you'll know exactly where to apply corrective action and ensure your profit protection. I began this webinar stating that I help business owners achieve two fundamental goals. I help them accelerate their top line revenue growth and I help them improve their bottom line profit growth. This webinar has focused on the latter issue of profit growth. Remember, remember, if you improve your internal operational efficiencies by as little as 5%, you'll increase your net profit by 25% or more, and this is really worth doing. The next webinar, titled Three Ways to Double Your Revenue in 18 to 24 Months, focuses on ways to accelerate revenue growth, and I hope you'll dial in for this. If any of you participating in this webinar feels I can be of personal help to you, I would be very pleased for your follow-up call or email to me. Of the many blogs I've written and posted on my website, my favorite one features Peyton Manning and is titled, Coaching Makes Him Better. As great as he is, he believes coaching makes him better. I'm a business coach and I can help you grow your business. Higher profits and more revenue. Call me and let's talk about your growth goals and how I can help you achieve them. Thank you for joining me for five ways to grow your business right now.